Welcome back. A famous Toronto landmark used during the Second World War may be closing its doors. The former de Havilland hangar is the home of the Canadian Air and Space Museum, but the building received eviction orders this past fall. Reporter Rada Taylor looks at the planes and reminds us of an important part of Canadian history. Unless you saw this year's air show, one of the only places in Toronto to find these vintage planes is at the Canadian Air and Space Museum. But Downsview Park is closing the historic doors in four months to make room for an ice rink. We're not uh, a good profit generator uh, for the park, so we have to uh, pack up and try to find a new home. And a hidden gem indeed. The museum is actually a hangar built in 1928. All of, all of his... Uh, Canadian history has been built right here. The Beaver, the, the Tiger Moth, even the first, uh, the first edition of the Canada Arm. What we have here is uh, we have our, uh, the world's only full-scale, one-to-one metal replica of the famous supersonic Abro Arrow. The museum does not just house artifacts, it also houses books, thousands and thousands of books, guides and manuals, all about the history of aviation. 89-year-old Philip Gray is a Second World War veteran pilot. He was involved with 16 operations as part of the only Canadian bomber squad. There's, there's as many Canadians flying bombers as there were. Brits, Canadians everywhere. Canada had the four, fourth biggest air force in the world then. But memories of the war and of the thousands of aircrafts built since the 1920s could dissolve into thin air by April if the building is torn down. If they can get rid of us and knock this building down, They've got a solid concrete floor base for their ice rink, which they won't have to build. They lost their heritage site designation and federal support from lease mix-ups. The museum is six to seven months behind their $15,000 monthly rent to Downsview Park. We all have the same objective to, to retain these artifacts for the next generation. Because basically we're only just temporary custodians of these artifacts. If this eviction follows through, Gray says the hundreds of thousands of young men in the Air Forces fighting during the Second World War have died in vain. A lot of these Canadian boys never became 22. They died right there. They were, they were buying uh, freedom, I suppose, as they thought. They gave away their lives easily to buy this freedom that we enjoy today. And now this freedom has been used to, <laughs> to dust some to spit back on their faces. They may have an uphill battle ahead, but the volunteers will continue with their fight to save this piece of Canadian history. For Hubber News, I'm Radha Taylor. We use them to text, tweet, and go online, but now iPhones and iPads have become one artist's canvas. British artist David Hockney has revolutionized where you can make art, showcasing his latest pieces on iPhones and iPads. I visited the Royal Ontario Museum to see why a few strokes of the finger are creating some buzz in the art world. The Royal Ontario Museum has opened the Fresh Flowers exhibit by David Hockney. It is the first online accessible gallery at the museum and features 20 iPods and 20 iPads showcasing Hockney's work. Artist David Hockney began working with the iPhone in 2008 using the Brushes app and just his thumbs. When the iPad was released in April, Hockney was able to expand his canvas. This is the first exhibition the ROM has ever done that's completely uh, a digital exhibition. Um, so it is actually quite new for us and uh, we've le learned a lot in the process. The exhibit features two short films of Hockney working on his pieces. As people are looking at a um, kind of slideshow of different images, there's about 400 in total, um, all created uh, for these devices. And um, that really do capture um, some of the wonderful qualities of, of David Hockney's work in other mediums such as uh, painting and photography. The flowers are really beautiful, the colors are vibrant, they're vivid, and every day he changes some of them so you get a, a fresh view and a fresh perspective. And it's, uh, it's looking like, a, as, it's as if you're looking at a garden. And uh, there's so many different flowers and palettes and colors he can use. And I never knew all, all that was available just on the computer. Hockney is able to add to the exhibit at any time because of its Wi-Fi capability. Uh, I really like it. It's, um, I think what he's done and just using this new uh, 
his new way of creating art uh, is really fantastic. And he's he's got that artistic touch and uh, and you know the the way he can put colors together. It's always pleasing and always aesthetic. The exhibit is on until January the 1st. For those of you unable to make it out to the Fresh Flowers exhibit, you can download a free complimentary flower online. And for those aspiring artists out there, now there's an app for that. For Humber TV, I'm Tavia Castle. Placido Domingo, move over. A community-based opera company is offering average folks the chance to perform opera. The Toronto Opera Repertoire recently held a preview for their upcoming 2012 season. Reem Jazar has the story. These two may seem like professional opera singers, but they are in fact ordinary men and women who decided to take up singing and join the Toronto Opera Repertoire. Some of the performers are continuing education students from the Toronto District School Board. Others hold down careers, like Carrie Gray, a massage therapist who drives from Peterborough for practice every week. I googled it and up came Toronto Opera Repertoire, Opera for the Rest of Us. And since I don't have a music degree and I don't really read, read music very well, I just decided to give it a try. Uh, it's the kind of cities that grow or the kind that have a, a big cultural base and not just the great big uh, Canadian opera companies or ballet. Uh, but the small ones too. I mean, it makes people want to come here, makes people want to work here, makes people want to live here. Giuseppe Messina has been the artistic director since 1967. He still says it is a unique opportunity for those who have always wanted to perform. It's in the evening and they can work during the day and come there and work at night and learn. Then the fact is that they get the experience. The repertoire performs two full operas every year. In the new year, they bring Lucia de Lammermoor and the Merry Widow to the stage. Now, the preview may have taken place at the Columbus Center, but the actual performances will take place at the Bigford Center in Toronto in February 2012. The Toronto Opera Repertoire will be entering their 45th season, and the diverse range of participants and audience members proves that it truly is opera for the rest of us. Reem Jazar, Humber News. Now for a little bit of flash and dash and some real girl power. It's the World Cup of Roller Derby. Not your typical all-female sports competition, but Humber News reporter Lindsay Tuji was there to see what this unconventional sport was all about. With the sound of a whistle, ladies hustle into place. Wheels hit the concrete and a lot of shoving takes place as they make their way around the track. This is roller derby, a rough and tumble sport that's jostled its way to recognition in Toronto. While this was the first ever roller derby World Cup held in the city this past month, it got many people asking, what exactly is this sport? There's two teams. Each team has blockers and one jammer. Um, both teams skate together in a pack. and Every time they pass an opposing blocker or the opposing jammer, it's a point. This sport is also quite a spectacle, with colorful costumes, wacky skates, and screaming hardcore fans. Team New Zealand even showed off some of their hometown pride. The sport has its roots in the United States, but is spread to countries all over the world. Thirteen of them were represented at the World Cup, and its players say they were excited to show their stuff. I fell in love with it immediately, and they had tryouts a couple weeks later, and I bought skates and pads and a helmet, and that was it. It's a really awesome experience, and we've met heaps of really cool people and learned so much. It's just, yeah, a huge learning curve for us, um, but it's been really cool. From teachers to stay-at-home moms, the sport now attracts all kinds of women. Or maybe in the beginning it was more of like a punk rock underground type of uh, person that would be interested in it, but since then it's evolved into um, of just really anybody can join and everybody feels comfortable. The Roller Derby World Cup has been a huge success and there's even been talk of expansion to turn it into an Olympic style event that travels to multiple countries. But one thing's for sure, this once underground fringe sport has caught the attention of Toronto and the world. For Humber News, I'm Lindsay Tudor. When we come back, I take us skating on Toronto's waterfront. <laughs> 